Okay, this is uh, <clears throat> the beginning of the Thunder Tiger Raptor 30 version 2 build. I'm going to go over a few things that uh, I'm going to be using, tools and stuff to do in the build. There may be a few that's listed in the guides and a few that's not. Um, if anybody, by the way, if anybody sees a shortcut or or know of a better way to do anything, uh, anything like that, you can send me a comment, post a comment, and uh, I'll review it, and if I think it makes sense, logical sense, then uh, I'll add that in the notes of the bill. Uh, the first thing, I'm going to go over with some of the tools that I've got here. Uh, I've got a Sharpie pen. It's not a Sharpie marker. It's got a real fine tip on the end of it, but it's permanent, just like a Sharpie. Needle nose pliers, uh, a pair of dice, cutters, angle cutters, wire cutters, whatever, several different names. Uh, Scotch tape, you never know when you might need to tape something to hold for you. Uh, a set of ball ink pliers. These are the non-curved. Uh, this is a these set of ball ink pliers has different blades, and it also has a blade that has the curved tips. So I may have to swap them out later. But I'm going to start out with the uh, straight tips. Uh, I've got a pair of small uh, Craftsman uh, Robo grips, and usually if you use something like this put a rag in between the blades so you can grip with it and it won't scar anything up. Uh, a pair of regular scissors. You never know when you might. I use scissors to cut wire and all kinds of different things. They've probably got gaps in the blades where I've been cutting wire. Fingernails, toenails, eyebrows, nose hairs, whatever. Uh, I got a small Phillips screwdriver. The reason is because I don't want it to uh, give me so much handle that I could get too much torque. So I got a small screwdriver. Even though the tip's small, if you push in a Phillips head screwdriver and you're not going to turn this blade uh, beyond uh, where you're going to round the screw out as long as you push it in there good, and you're not going to need that much torque putting uh, metal screws into plastic. These are what the metal screws look like. The threads on them are pretty coarse. This is what's used to hold the frame together. Uh, got two open end wrenches. This one's a 7mm. It's got a hook side and a straight side, or an offset side. This is a 5.5mm, same. I've got a small jeweler's file. You never know when you might find a rough edge and you want to file it off. I also got sandpaper too that uh, would do some of the same things. I've got a tube of white lithium grease. I've probably had this for years, so you can tell. I don't use it very much, but this lithium grease is. Uh, what I use to grease any of the bearings and whatnot. There's probably going to be some people that argue that, but uh, this will prevent rust and corrosion, plus reduce wear on the bearings and any moving parts. Uh, I got a, a Craftsman spinner, quarter inch spinner, for uh, putting sockets on. I've got a deep well socket here. It's, uh, I got a 10 millimeter. I've got a, I think this is an 8 millimeter, it is. And this one is a 7 millimeter. And then I don't have a 5.5 millimeter socket, so I had to buy or use my EXI 5.5 millimeter uh, tool. Okay, uh, I'm using 3 in 1 oil instead of the tri, tri oil whatever it is, but I'm pretty sure that this 3-in-1 three one, three will work just as well as the uh, 
tri tower or whatever it is oil that others talk about. We got an exacto blade with a fresh blade on it. You have to be careful and don't poke yourself because I do all the time. And got a ball ink pliers. A set of ball ink pliers. These come in real handy. And this is uh, what everybody calls CA. Uh, this is mine is Gorilla brand, the, the Gorilla brand. I got it at Walmart, so you know it's pretty, pretty uh, popular out in my area. We got a fresh tube of uh, blue Loctite. This is a 240, 242 blue Loctite, not the uh, the lock that uh, you can lock down some nuts and you will never get them off unless you heat them up with a torch or something. And these are my the Allen wrenches. I think this is a three millimeter and a two millimeter, a one millimeter, and maybe this is one millimeter. Anyway, I don't know what the sizes are. But uh, they'll fit the nuts and bolts that I'm going to be using to put this helicopter together. So with that said, uh, next step is uh, we're going to go through, according to the manual here, we're going to start with the fuel tank assembly, which is step one. Step two is the clutch belt assembly. Step three is the frame assembly part one, and maybe we'll get to the main drive gear this evening. And I won't do the head and the washout assembly until another day. So let's get started, and we'll see what happens. Okay, you guys, uh, first step in uh, building this thing: RC. Thunder Tiger Raptor 30 version 2. First thing it says is to put the fuel tank together. So I get this fuel tank out. like it's already put together. You can see the, I don't know if you can see the clump down inside it or not. The clump's already in there. And it's already put together. So that was pretty easy. Uh, a tip was uh, one of the fellows on the website said to not put the tubing on yet because uh, it just get in the way of the build. So, step one, build the fuel tank. It's already done for me. That's pretty good. Pretty quick, too. Okay, this is step two. Step two is the clutch bell assembly. Uh, this is the pack that the clutch bell and the bearings and everything comes in. Uh, the picture shows that the uh, bearing for the clutch bell, actually the clutch bell itself, is separate. And it also shows that the uh, clutch liner is not installed. But as you can see, the clutch liner is already there. And the bearing is already in the uh, clutch bell. Uh, this is the pinion and the pinion gear bearing. So basically all I got to do is screw the pinion to the clutch bell. And I'm not going to put any Loctite on there because I was from uh, reading 
some of the other instructions and stuff. The reason is, is if you don't put Loctite on them threads, it's because the motor turns in this direction. So that means that the clutch bell is going to tighten on the pinion by itself. It'll never come loose. It had to be a mighty serious kickback to kick that clutch bell back this direction and unscrew it. Plus, if you ever have to replace this from what I've been reading, as if it splits or if you have to replace the liner, you have to take it out of the uh, cage and to put the, a new liner in. And uh, if you put Loctite on that, it's really, really hard to get out of the uh, the cave. So that's pretty much it. That's step two. Step two is finished. Okay, we're back again. Uh, step three is mainframe assembly part one. So I imagine there's more than just one part to uh, building this. So let's open up the bag here and see what we got. Servo tray goes like this. This is the bottom. This is the top. This is where the servos go. Awesome. They got servo mounts already. Looks like this is a little bit different from the Nexus. This is where the switch goes, the power switch. I won't probably won't be using the power switch because I'm gonna put a uh, a uh, switching mechanism. So let's put that aside. Take the frame out. Looks like they got it tied together here. Mm, pretty nice tie. I can use that for something else. Put that aside. This is the frame assembly. They just got it stuck together. The two halves. And here's the parts bag. Inside this parts bag, we got the uh, the little frame posts. And these are the belt belt pulleys, bearings screws and it's like bushings of some sort so uh, we'll be uh, putting this together let's get it opened up right here let's see what we got I don't need the pullers at the moment Looks like the starter shaft. Yep. That's the starter shaft. And that's the, uh, the, hop, the top of the starter shaft. And several bushings and odds and ends and screws, washers. And the frame post or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. So we got these out, we're going to cut them out and look and see where the long ones go and the short ones go and see which side is best to put them in first and we'll come back and see what it looks like. Okay, we got the frame post in. I'm going to show you what frame post goes where. Uh, there's four long frame posts and there's eight short ones four long ones, this is the tail side, four long ones, one goes here, one goes here, one goes here, one goes here, and these are the short ones, there's eight of them. So we're going to take a look at it and see what the next step is in this particular step, 
and we'll be right back. Okay, this is part three of step two. Uh, we've got our guide pulleys and we got the little bushings and we've got the two two uh, little axles that they spin on and our pins. So now what we do is we put the pins through the one put the bushing on one Pushing on the other side. Do the same for this one. They're both pretty much identical, so it don't really matter which side or any particular way that you put these bushings and pins in. They're the same on both sides. So are the pulleys. You want to get them pretty evened up. these little dudes to get our frame back. One goes in this side and one goes in this side. Like so. And they all fit together. them together or anything or screw them together yet. I uh, don't know if I've got other parts that I've got to put in before I screw it up and screw it together. So that's it for part three of step two. No, part two of step three. <laughs> so let's see what next the next part is. Okay, this next step is to uh, put the bearings and the bearing housings on the frame. There's uh, there's like three different sizes of bearings. There's this one that looks a little larger than this one. And this one is smaller. The two big bearings will go one here and one here. And the small bearing will go into the starter shaft area in this area here. So let's put these puppies in there and see what she looks like. That big one goes there. These two are the same size. placing the uh, starter shaft and putting the starter shaft and the, uh, the clutch bell and all that together and placing it in the, uh, the frames. Okay, this is the assembly of the starter shaft. <coughs> so we got to cut this puppy out of the bag. notches and the three the two notches that's for when you put this coupling on top when I put this on the top I screw it down put a little lock tight in and all that so right now find the lock washer. There's a clip washer in here somewhere. Take the clip. Push it on. And a flat washer. 
say before you put the, uh, the starter coupling on the top, clean this and the set screws, two set screws, clean them good with alcohol. Now, <clears throat> I got me some, I think it's like 86 proof alcohol. This is some pretty good stuff. If you got any cuts on you, it'll definitely burn you. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna squirt them down good. Wipe them down. This gets all the oil and stuff off, so when you put the blue Loctite on them, uh, it'll hold. Tighter, tighter than here. If it's got any kind of oil or anything on it, the Loctite won't adhere very well. So, now, we take this puppy and get us a little tad of Loctite. I got a fresh can, fresh bottle of Loctite. Oh yeah, shake your Loctite because it does have a tendency to sediment and settle. So shake the Loctite up good. And instead of putting it in a, a bottle or anything, I took a straight pin and poked a small hole in the bottom and the top of it. So when I get done, I can take my pin and put it back in the hole so it won't leak. in there. You don't want to goop it up. Run our fingers around it. <clears throat> Get it started. to put a washer on top of this so 
I'm going to adhere to the instructions, but it looks to me like there should be a washer on the top of it. small screwdriver, not a very big one, it's a 90006, I guess that's a model number, I don't know what the point size is, but it's small, it's a little bit smaller than what you need to turn these screws with, but the reason I used a small one is so I wouldn't torque the screws down and strip them out, it helps me eliminate them, so I just tighten them up decent, not I didn't try to torque them down real hard or anything. Uh, I checked all my bearings. Everything's moving freely and smoothly. I used a little 3-1 oil. Some people use the try some kind of triple try something or another oil. Uh, I didn't have any. And 3 and one oil is basically the same thing. And I didn't use it to coat anything or use it in the bearings because these bearings are sealed anyway. 
I just coated the, the, the shaft here so that uh, hopefully it won't rust on me if it sets up for a little bit. <clears throat> uh, the next step is to take the servo tray and notice my orientation. I've got the, the large tongue part down with the, uh, the end here. This is the front bottom and it's going to sit up like this. Screw it together and that's pretty much that part. So I'm going to screw it together, put all the screws in it and we'll take a look at it when I get done. Okay, that concludes part one of the uh, frame assembly. I've got the servo tray mounted, got the fuel tank in, got the pulley, the belt pulley wheels in, got the clutch bell and the crank rod, the starter shaft in, and uh, everything appears to be pretty decently in, pretty tight. So, that concludes step two, no, step three, the frame assembly, part one. Okay, this is step four. We're going to assemble the uh, main gear. It looks like it's pretty much all ready together, but we're going to take it apart and make sure all the parts are good. Plus we're going to take the screws out and put Loctite in them. That screws into the hub. Because uh, we sure don't want it coming apart while we're up in the air. That's for sure. So what we got in here is we got the one-way bearing and the uh, one-way shaft. See, it says 86 tooth. Let's see if I can get it where you can see it. There we go, 86 T. So this is an 86 tooth gear. I don't know if there's any numbers on this one or not. Yep, this says 41. Uh, can't see that one. 41 up in that corner there. Let's see if my camera will zoom in on it. Still can't see it. Oh, I can barely see it. Trust me, it's a 41 tooth, and this is for the uh, tail bell. So, what we're gonna do? We're gonna look in there, make sure the bearings look good. They do, and we take the, uh, the belt drive gear, place it in there over the top. Make sure it's up snug. Make sure the holes are lined up. Take my little out of range and line them up. A little bit off there.
lock rings that go on the, uh, the one-way shaft. You have to make sure you get the right orientation. You always want the, uh, the bolt hole to go up this way. So there'll be a lock ring on the bottom and a lock ring here to hold it in there. Okay. Get our Allen wrench. Squirt a little Loctite on it. Yeah. I'm going to put the Loctite on the back side because I don't want to get it on the plastic. If you get this Loctite on plastic, it'll eat it up. Loctite loves plastic. I got a little drip. So, I'm going to put a little dab on the tip of the threads there. Get that over there. I didn't want to do that. So, we flip this over. Put a little drop in each one of these. through the holes, back them back out, and then run them back in. The reason is I want it to get in there, get the lock tight, bring it back up into the threads, and then pull it back into the threads. snug them up one at a time. I always like snugging them a little bit at a time because I don't want the gear to get out of line or the or nothing. Take the other side and get a little bit tighter. Not much, just a little. You have to let this lock down cure overnight. It's supposed to take 24 hours to cure. Looking good. So now take our one way shaft, put it down in there, and take one of our lock rings, put it on our lock ring pliers. Spread it apart, slide it in there, and make sure it gets seated. 
really need to make sure that that gets seated because you do not want it to come off. There we go. Yeah, it's good and seated. Do the same thing for this side. locked in and that's it I didn't put any grease or oil in the one-way barriers because you don't want them to slip so that concludes the assembly of the main gear and it's ready to go to the next step